Version 1.8 of Open Metadata and Collate makes the integrated MCP server available to the general public. Let's lead into the examples by talking about our vision and how we built the central nervous system for data. Our vision at Open Metadata is to enable data to flow intelligently, contextually, and seamlessly across organizations, like a nervous system. Authorized users should access data effortlessly, even via LLMs. To achieve this, Open Metadata adopts an API-first approach. Every feature and interaction is built as a robust, secure API, enabling seamless integration with our UI and external tools. We use a schema-first design where every entity, relationship, and metadata change follows a well-defined schema. This ensures governance, validation, and transparency by design. Our ecosystem includes over 90 connectors, linking tables, dashboards, pipelines, and ML models into a unified knowledge graph. This dynamic graph captures not just data, but its relationships, making it accessible for LLMs and agents. Data without context is just noise. Open Metadata's rich metadata, lineage, usage, ownership, tags, and governance, all the features that are available in Open Metadata, helps the LLMs understand not just the data, but its why and how behind the data. We aim to shift from tool-centric to conversation-centric metadata platforms, allowing business users to interact with data via natural language, eliminating the need to navigate complex tools. Introducing our enterprise-ready MCP server, purpose-built for the open metadata ecosystem. This embedded 100% open source server includes security, availability, and complete audit trails for all operations, tracking data access and modifications. What you see is the same as what we see. Unlike typical MCP servers, where client-server authentication can be challenging, our embedded server integrates authentication and authorization layers. Every client, Claude, Goose, or others, must pass these layers. Every user must have authentication and authorization. No user is allowed to perform any operation which their user is not allowed to do, ensuring no unauthorized operations occur. The next segment in this video is going to illustrate how to enable the MCP server in both Open Metadata and Collate. The process is identical. New in version 1.8 is Model Context Protocol Support, commonly referred to as MCP. To better utilize AI, this recent innovation unlocks some truly amazing capabilities to streamline your workflow. But first you have to enable it and we're going to walk through that flow and integrate with Claude. Starting from home here in Open Metadata, we need to first install the MCP app. So start by navigating to the settings menu. Now select applications. Next, we click on add apps. Here you can search for MCP or scroll down for it. Here we see it, we click read more and we select Install. Click on Configure. Now on this page, the help on the right side will explain what each of these fields are. Note that they are related and only apply to streamable HTTP. If you aren't using streamable HTTP, then leave these as they are and click Submit. We're using SSE in this case, so we'll leave them as is. We need one more thing before we move on to Claude. Click on your profile here in the upper right, select View Profile, click on Access Token. The options here are to generate or revoke a token. I've already got one, so I can just copy it for the next step. Moving over to Claude, which if you haven't already downloaded and installed it, you'll need to do. Now click on Settings, select Developer, and now we want to edit the config file. This will pop up a Windows Explorer, at which point you can open it with your favorite editor. I'm just going to use text edit in this case. This is what it looks like when you've got a configured MCP server. This should already be in the file. If it isn't, copy it. These are the parts that we need. And what's going to be relevant is the URL here for the MCP server. Generally, it's your URL slash MCP slash SSE for an SSE type, and then the auth server, 
which will be the same URL slash MCP in this case. Finally, down here, we have the auth header. This is where the access token goes. Make sure that you keep the word bearer here, and if it isn't in there, add it. The rest of this will be pasted in. Now we just need to restart Claude so it can connect to the server. These sliders here show you the search and tools, and you'll see the open metadata tools are installed and ready for you to start exploring. Building on the capabilities unlocked with MCP, we're going to create a glossary and the terms under it using the MCP server and Claude integration. We'll start by looking in our governance section and we see there is no glossary currently defined. So let's switch to Claude and ask it to create an e-commerce glossary. This is going to see if there's an existing glossary and it's going to see that there isn't one, so it will create one and try to add relevant terms based on the context it has. You want to let this have access. Every once in a while you get that prompt. So we see it's creating some glossary terms here. Nice. It's created an e-commerce glossary with 12 essential terms. Gives us a nice overview of what it's created. So let's take a look back in open metadata and we'll see how this automates the process of creating the glossary terms based on business use cases. And look at that, we've got 11 glossaries in here for e-commerce, conversion rate, drop shipping, return on ad spend. This is pretty great, this just took a few seconds. But we can get a little fancier. We've got this prompt and I'm gonna ask it to add the glossary terms from this website that has a glossary of e-commerce terminology and add those terms to our e-commerce glossary. And now we see we've got a whole bunch more details from that source. Take a look in open metadata real quick. So the glossaries, those have increased. We see we have more glossaries. Let's take a look at that e-commerce glossary for some of the fields that have been added. We've got A-B testing, average, bounce rate, bundling, churn rate, all e-commerce terms. So what this illustrates is how you can use pretty much anything as a source to enhance your glossary. Could be a CSV that you upload, another URL, some other format. This will help you automate the process of building that glossary and terms in open metadata that can be later used for a function like tagging assets all part of simplifying your data governance process. Here's another use case you can unlock with MCP. Imagine you're a data engineer and you want to build a report of all the pipelines and statuses there are. As you can see here in open metadata, we currently have a Fivetran set up with a couple of pipelines. Let's jump over to Claude and see what we can do. I'm going to ask it to get me a status of all the pipelines and prepare a table with the pipelines and a corresponding status for them. Here we see the tools doing their thing. There's the two pipelines. Now it's generating our report. So here we've generated a status report out of open metadata on pipeline with some useful information. It did it as a table, as we requested. It gave us some observations. Your system currently has one active data pipeline managed by Fivetran. The integrations, there's no recent activity. We've got a lot of green lights. So that's super handy, easy to get. And if you've got a lot of pipelines, that can really be useful. But let's think outside the box here a little. Let's tell it to create a modern interface for the data and see what we get. And check that out. We've got a nice little interface that gives us some details about what's going on. It's cleanly presented. And we didn't have to write any code and that just took a few seconds. So that's some of the possibilities that can be unlocked using MCP with open metadata. We can't wait to see what you unlock with this capability.
Let's run through some prompt ideas now to get you thinking about the possibilities as a business user or even a data analyst. Let's start. Show me all the data sets related to customer transactions from the last quarter. And there we go. We find a bunch of transactions, descriptions of the tables and the columns and additional related schemas. So that was pretty convenient. Let's try another one. Let's list all data sets tagged with finance or accounting in the glossary or tag. So this is interesting. It didn't find anything currently explicitly tagged with finance or accounting, but it did discover finance related data sets that could benefit from proper tagging. So here you've got a list of things that you could go and investigate and go work on. Let's try some query generation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this off. We're gonna generate a query to show monthly revenue trends for the past year. It's gonna generate SQL prompts for you, or actually SQL code. And as they generate, think about what it would take for you to write this on your own. But also keep in mind as we run through these, obviously you need to test it just as you would test your own code. But it got you a long way there, and it's going to give you a nice overview of what's been done for you in the code. Let's try another one. So this time, we're going to create a SQL query to find our top 10 customers by purchase fault. This is meant to get you thinking about how you could take advantage of the MCP tools that are available. And this is using the metadata that's in your catalog to figure out all of these fields and tables and put that all together, including join statements, formats, and everything. Very useful, very powerful. Again, think about what that would take for you to put that together yourself. We've got all sorts of insights over here on the left that Claude is giving back to us. So let's jump to a report generation prompt. We want to create a monthly customer acquisition and retention report. So here it's again generating the SQL, but we're gonna do something a little different when this finishes. I just want you to note how much it's doing for you again. Some of this may not be difficult to do, but it's tedious to find and make sure all the fields are right, double check your formatting, and write all of these statements out. So that gives us some good overview of what it's done so that we can make a determination if that's what in fact we wanted it to do. And we could, of course, use the AI to fine tune what's been generated and make modification. But let's get a little bit crazy here. Let's ask it to build a customer retention dashboard based on the above information, but generate sample data for it now. And we could replace that with actual data later when that query is run. So this is going to generate a bunch of code for you. We'll skip to the end and I'll show you the result. All right, there's our interface. We have these great little blocks of summary information about customers, active customers, churn rate. We've got line charts, we've got flowing, we've got bar charts, we've got all sorts of charts. Nice highlighting on the numbers, draw your attention to things with key insights. All of that was generated just in seconds. Let's try one more fun one. So I'm going to ask it to help me find information about customers in my table. Okay, so it's found information about customer tables. And here is a complete list. So we get a list of the tables that they were in, columns, stats about every field, even provided some SQL for common queries you could run, relationships, all sorts of cool things. Now, this is one of my favorite things to try on just about anything anymore. And that's to ask it to put that information into a modern looking user interface. Something in Claude that's pretty cool about these artifacts it generates is in the upper right corner, if you're not familiar with this, is publish. So you can then take this and publish it as a URL and give it to other people. All right, there we have it. We have our customer data explorer. We've got three schemas, we've got columns. We can go into those, see each one that's available. And you can get pretty crazy with this. So we can, this actually gave us multiple things that we could choose from. Doesn't work because we didn't tell it to make it work. There's all sorts of ways that you can make this more expandable 
by modifying your prompt. But this was pretty cool. And there you have it, a fun set of example prompts that you can use with the Open Metadata MCP server. Play around, try whatever you want, and share your ideas with us. Open Metadata.